Hi everyone, I am Anand, an IT consultant working um, with SharePoint and the Power Platform. Uh, in the recent months, I have uh, become uh, an active uh, community contributor, thanks to some inspiring community members, some of uh, whom are in the meeting today. I'm excited to be joining the call today and present to you all an event page created in SharePoint using spaces and formatted lists. Uh, the solution itself um, involves blending spaces, uh, lists, a timer web part and a quick links web part uh, for the user interface supported by an events web uh, list that works in the background. Uh, so first of all, uh, what I'd like you to do is show you the event page itself in action and then dive into the backend setup. So with that, I will dive into the demo here. And that is here. So what you see here is my uh, event page. Uh, and that is, uh, it's actually uh, the, the content and the data that you see here is all some sample data that I pulled together uh, from my dev client. Uh, the event itself is a, uh, it's called hybrid in this case. It's a two day event focusing on the future of work. Uh, and uh, what you see on this event page is um, first of all, a header uh, that I put in here with some introductory text, text and then followed by the SharePoint space uh, embedded web part. So basically what I've done is created a, uh, space within this site uh, and then embedded that in in here using the embed web part and you will see here uh, it loads in a sort of idle state and then uh, only upon the user clicking that in uh, web part will it then actually load and that was actually a performance tip that I got actually from the pro Microsoft spaces team so now within this space uh, the users are greeted with a welcome message of course and then there is a an introductory video as well that they can click and watch and pull it up close if they wanted to and then they can click and drag to look at uh, the different components that are in the in the space uh, we have um, a sharepoint uh, icon here which uh, takes the user to uh, the the learning and training content that we've uh, cre uh, curated here uh, that are related to this event and uh, Teams is where we are running the event uh, using live events and uh, a Yammer community where people can uh, collaborate and uh, take part in the conversation about the event. So that's the um, uh, 360 or 3D space within the SharePoint uh, event page. And on the right hand side, you see a timer web part uh, that basically tells the visitors uh, they have six, the event is in six days, they can sign up for sessions. And uh, right below beneath that, I have used um, a list actually, and that uh, shows up some key dates and important information about the what, when, where, and who about the event. Uh, if I further scroll down here, uh, it comes to the sessions list, uh, which is a custom JSON formatted list. Um, uh, I've used column formatting for this list. Uh, so it has these uh, columns here. There's a session column, which uh, tells the title of the event. People can read up about the title. They can then go here and uh, click on the more icon here and comes the pop-up message with the uh, full text there. Uh, the host information is available here and then a couple of hyperlink columns uh, for the two day event itself so they can see what times uh, which sessions are on which times and then they can click open this to then open the actual event uh, and then add it to their calendars or they can simply join the meeting directly from here uh, and that uh, sends them to the Microsoft Teams live event link. Uh, finally, there is a um, session track column here, uh, which tells them which track each session belongs to, and that uh, I also have um, a complementary or a helper list, uh, which is view formatted, and that uh, with, with which uh, users can then filter down uh, the long list of uh, sessions by tracks, and then they can uh, take a look at all of, the, all of that from here. Uh, and you'll see these color codes. Uh, I've used a border color here uh, that matches with the, the track uh, border color. So that tells uh, a visual connection between the tracks and the, and the list uh, session uh, sessions in the list. Uh, further down uh, on the event page is the, the team information. That is the people that are um, behind the event um, and uh, hovering over the cards will open up the profile cards and people can uh, contact uh, the team. Uh, finally, on the page is a rate the event um, uh, forms um, a survey link um, linked using the quick links web part and that takes uh, the users to rate the event page. So that is the event page. Uh, so what I'd like to do next is uh, we'll show you a quick uh, page design and the code itself behind the scenes. So I'm going to go there. All right. So starting off with the space itself, uh, the space is created in the same site, like I mentioned, and I have used uh, some text web parts here, a uh, video web part, the video is stored in the document library uh, within the same site. And I've used some uh, 
logo icons uh, with some transparency background setting uh, within the space uh, to to sort of nicely blend that into the space. Uh, and the event, uh, the, the space itself is embedded on the event page, like I mentioned. Uh, and the other thing is like, you might wonder why I went to the space and why not uh, a hero or a highlighted content web part. Uh, a couple of reasons. One is uh, I could, I am, I'm able to pack more content uh, within the space uh, without uh, really taking too much real estate on the page itself because I'm using the embed web part. Uh, and then um, and then the other thing is um, as much as possible, I'd like to keep the users uh, on the event page without them having to leave the page to go and access the content because I can put in videos and uh, the other embed parts within the space and that loads up within that event page itself. And I've used this embed code to put in the uh, put in the uh, space inside the um, uh, inside the page. Uh, so that's the uh, space. Uh, moving on. So I'll talk about the lists that I uh, have on the on the event page. So. The first list is the sessions list. Uh, here I have these column sessions, a uh, single line text column uh, about is a um, multiple person column, uh, sorry, multi line column, a uh, host is a multiple person column. Uh, I have four hyperlink columns, which I showed, uh, two of them uh, for the um, event links uh, and two of them for the join links for the Microsoft Teams live events and a session track, which is a single line text. So in terms of, um, the, the back end setup. Uh, so what I've done is uh, column formatting for each of these columns. So let's take a look at them. The session column is a single line text and I have a div element type here uh, with styling uh, to only show the left hand side border. And the border radius is set to 4px to basically get that curved edge uh, look. And the borders are colored based on the track uh, they belong to like I was showing earlier. The session name is then rendered by a span element type. And I've also used a share button here with the with the custom row action property set to action type share. This then brings up the default share pop-up window when clicked, and then users can copy the link or send uh, to email with the appropriate appropriate permission settings. So moving on to the, the second column, which is the about column. Uh, this is a multi-line text column, and here I have uh, two div elements wrapped inside a parent div, and the first child div renders the text in the field but restricts that to 70 characters. And the second uh, child div renders the more icon. And, uh, and uh, when the icon is hovered, it shows the full text uh, in a pop-out uh, window. So that's the about column. And then the host column, and the third one, uh, is a multi-person column, which is basically an actually uh, an out-of-the-box field in lists. So for each person in the list item, it uh, is rendered a div element, uh, which contains two div elements. The first div element to show the person's image if the index value of the person in the array is less than or equal to two. And a second div to basically show all person's name uh, separated by comma. And this div also contains a span to show the number of remaining people in the person column. So we, we only show pictures for the first two and the others we just show a plus two, plus one and so on, depending on the number of people that are in the list item. Uh, the next one I have is the event day columns. Uh, there, these are two columns, hyperlink columns, and uh, one for each day of the event. And I basically apply the same formatting for both of them. Uh, here I'm rendering two element type A's, one uh, showing the time of the event, and this is basically a simple text that I have just put, a text string that I've put in the um, description field of the hyperlink, and the other one uh, to let the user view or save the event to their calendar, and that is basically hedge drafting the um, uh, the, field, the current field itself, and that is picking up the hyperlink that I've, the URL that I've stored in the hyperlink field. So th that is the um, uh, event day column, and I also have this um, uh, call to action pop out again using custom card props uh, on the on the uh, field. Next, I have the uh, join day columns, which are again two hyperlink uh, columns, uh, one for each day. Again, same formatting applied to these two as well. Uh, so within a div element type, I have a span for showing the team's logo and then uh, an L type A to show uh, to HF the team's live event. And I also have the same custom card props to for the um, hover text for the call to action. And uh, for the last column there, session track, I haven't really uh, put in any formatting, but it's just a simple uh, single line text. At the end of it, this is how the session uh, sessions list looks. So I did some uh, 
column width adjustments as well and save that uh, uh, to the view so that uh, it stays the same uh, with the same dimensions in the page when embedded. Uh, and I've embedded using the, the list web part on the page and then I've also hidden the command bar and all the, the see all options. Uh, the second list is the next one, and that is the the tracks list. This, uh, like I was showing, this was this is uh, this acts as a helper list, allows users to um, filter the sessions by tracks, and this is how I've connected them, editing the um, uh, sessions list, and then um, specifying uh, using the dynamic filtering on the sessions list, and then choosing the tracks uh, list for the filter. So for the tracks list itself, uh, I've used uh, view formatting. It has two columns, basically um, the title and the about uh, column. The title is a single line, about is a multi-line. Uh, both of them are rendered by two div elements inside, a, inside an SAP, SAP uh, row card class because I wanted that boxed card view. And then I also set a, uh, set a border styling so that the color matches the tracks colors in the sessions list. So users can see a color code sync between the two, sort of acting like a uh, color legend, if you will. Then I have the people list, which is my third list in the, on the event page. And it's basically to show uh, all the people involved in the event. Um, I mean, the reason I went with the list instead of the, the standard out of the box people uh, web part is because uh, one reason uh, I get more flexibility with this, uh, the list because I can customize it. And the other thing is uh, I can fit in, uh, let's say five columns uh, where uh, in that, uh, in that uh, column layout, uh, the section layout. Uh, whereas if I went with the um, out of the box uh, people web part, I could only fit in four, but I wanted to fit in five columns. So that was one of the reasons I did that. Uh, the people web part uh, itself is uh, it's it's actually out of the it's actually out of the box uh, tile view, uh, simply stripped down to just show the person's image and uh, the name uh, with a hover profile card. So I haven't really done much formatting uh, on that one. The, the 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 list four and the final one here is the what, when, where, and who of the event. Uh, that basically shows uh, some key information about the event at the uh, like a quick summary at the very top. Uh, these are four columns, um, and then uh, are each of them are rendered by a span, which has the icon on the and the field names uh, that are rendered by span element types, and then the text content itself is rendered by a p element type. So it kind of sits beneath the uh, the title there. So. Um, this is the final result, the event page using SharePoint spaces and formatted lists to design the user experience. And uh, what I'm looking at the future of the event page after the event, uh, I'd like to transform the event page itself into a sessions video recordings portal. That is all sessions that are happening in the event, uh, will, which, are, which will be recorded of course, will then be later published on the same event page. Which will, and then I'm planning to use this um, uh, JSON formatted SharePoint document library uh, uh, with, with a nice card view with a lot of rich information uh, and action buttons, call to action buttons uh, appearing there on the cards. That's how the page will transform into uh, after the event. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, here's all the sample code. Uh, I actually put it out there in the, uh, the community blog. Thanks to all the reviewers to, to have it uh, published. I think it went out a couple of days ago. Everything that I showed in terms of the demo, uh, the code is in that, uh, in that uh, blog post. So you can scan that with the QR code. So thank you and uh, over to you, Dave. Awesome, very, very cool stuff. That really looks clean and slick. Uh, excellent job. Uh, thanks for sharing it with us, Shannon. Nice, nice work. Thank you.